Hello everyone and welcome to our succession lesson. Uh, please complete part one of the succession activity if you haven't done it yet. Learning objectives for today um, are for you to be able to differentiate between primary and secondary succession and understand the roles of immigration facilitation and interspecific competition in them. Uh, to understand the impact of succession on community structure and also the concept of a disclimax community. So first of all, to define succession. Now, succession is a change in community over time. So just a reminder, a community is all of the species that live in a particular area at a particular time. So we're going to talk for an example of primary succession. And primary succession is, as we said, a change in community over time. But what makes it primary is that it's on an area that was not previously colonised. So let's imagine that we've got a brand new island that has been created from volcanic eruptions and the ocean. And so lots of islands have been created like this, for example, New Zealand. And here we've got our bare rock. So this is a brand new island. There's nothing living on it. And so the first thing that's going to happen is that pioneer species are going to come and inhabit um, that particular rock. And so this would be things like lichen and mosses that don't need soil, they can just live on that, directly on that bare rock. These organisms will decompose, and what you can see here is that they're starting to build up a thin layer of topsoil. And that creates a change in that sear, so, um, or in that ecosystem. So remember, a sear is a stage in succession, um, and we can see here, in this sear, um, we've started to build up a layer of topsoil. So now that environment has, has changed a little bit from the original bare rock, and we can have things like grasses coming and living on that top soil. And you can just see that gradually the soil gets deeper and deeper. And what this means is that you can get bigger and bigger plants living there. So in the next year, we can have uh, small shrubs or bushes coming and living in that area. And then finally, in this last image here, we can see a massive tree <laughs> is able to uh, produce massive roots into this thick soil. Okay, how is that different from secondary succession? So again, succession is a change of community over time, but what makes it secondary here is that the area is recolonized after being cleared. So there would be some sort of um, clearance event, something like a fire or a flood, and we can see here we've got a fire. So in this image, just remember that these are snapshots of the same area at different periods of time. So here we have a fire and the area following that um, no longer has plants. And then after a little bit of time, we now have a few uh, maybe grasses or um, smaller plants. And this is where it's a little bit different. So if you were to make a comparison in an exam question, uh, remember that things like the pioneer species are different in primary and secondary succession. In secondary succession, our pioneer species are generally things like grasses that can grow quite quickly. Whereas in primary succession, you've got um, mosses and lichen that can live on bare rock. So the main difference between primary and secondary is that we've already got soil in secondary succession. So then after another bit of time, we start to get larger and larger organisms forming. And eventually we get a climax community. Okay, And this climax community, as you can see here, the thing that makes it a climax community is that it will have a dominant species. So, for example, um, these trees might be dominant species. Um, and the interesting thing here is that actually you would think that through succession, biodiversity would just keep on increasing. But in actual fact, biodiversity increases up until you reach the climax community and then it decreases a bit and the reason it decreases is that you have a dominant species and the dominant species occupies most of that area and the resources. So a couple of examples of secondary or, or where you can see secondary succession is following things like controlled or prescribed burns. So and those of you who've maybe been to the United States of America or Canada you might have heard about these burns. And now in Canada, they actually call them prescribed burns rather than controlled burns. And that's because they're not very easily controlled, but you can prescribe it to an area 
And the reason why you'd prescribe it to an area and you'd, you'd, you'd burn a bit of your woods is to stop a hotter um, fire from happening later on. Um, and you will probably remember as well, um, very recently we've had really, really um, intense bushfires in Australia. Okay, um, And this is actually one of the sort of uh, iconic photos from that period of time. So these have been um, really, really severe and, and obviously impacted loads of communities over there. Um, and so the reason why you'd often in um, in an area prescribe a burn um, is to stop these really, really intense and, and hotter out of control burns. Um, this is an area down here that you can see after um, a forest fire. And just a couple of other key terms to touch upon here. So uh, we mentioned these already. The term for different stages in succession is a seer. Um, the first organisms are pioneer species. Biodiversity generally increases, but as we said, it actually decreases a bit when we come to the, the climax community. And the stable community that's sort of at the end of succession is a climax community. An example of a disclimax uh, would be something where, for example, you're gardening. So um, when you mow your lawn, you cut down any um, shrubs that might be growing and you keep the organisms much shorter. Another really good example is the heather moorland. So here you can see um, that this area is actually managed um, and there's a case study in your activity about this, about um, grouse uh, management. But if we were to leave that area um, to sort of go through succession, it would actually look a lot more like the image on the right here. And you can see here we've got more of the dominant species um, and this is the climax community that's actually been uh, reached. Okay. A couple of other key terms, so the difference between mutualism and commensalism. So remember, mutualism is interaction between species that benefit both. And so, for example, uh, the bacteria that live in a cow's stomach or in their rumen, um, one of their stomach chambers, I should say, um, benefits because the cow eats grass and so they're receiving food. It's a nice warm environment. But the cow benefits because um, remember that the bacteria produce cellulase and they can't produce that enzyme. So they both benefit. Commensalism is a little bit different. So this is where um, one benefits and the other is unaffected. So a really nice example is the Atlantic puffin uh, that forms its nest in vacant rabbit burrows. So the puffin benefits because it's now got somewhere to put its nest, but the rabbit is not affected because it's, it's left the burrow already. So please go back to your activity and complete parts two and also three.